Good morning and welcome to our service. So glad you could join us. If you have a Bible and you would like to follow along with me, we are in Paul's letter to the Romans. We're in chapter 8. We're going to read verses 5 through 8, but we're going to start at verse 1 to give us just a bit of context. We've been working our way through Paul's letter, and the title for our message this morning is Life in the Spirit, and this is our second in our series. So let's pray, and then we'll get started. So Lord, we do thank you once again for your goodness to us and for your word. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to understand what you're saying to us, that we might apply what we learned this morning to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. After looking at verses 1 through 4, which is what we did last week, we might remember that all who are in Christ are filled right now with the promised Holy Spirit. Which means if you're a believer in Jesus this morning, the Spirit of God dwells within you. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. John 14, 16. In John's Gospel, Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit and about his work when he came, that the spirit of life would be unique to the believer, that he'd teach them all things pertaining to the truth, that he'd remind them of his teachings, that he'd bear witness about him and help them to do the same, that he'd convict the world concerning sin righteousness, and judgment, that he'd speak the message of God, the gospel, and glorify Christ. Romans chapter 8 is a chapter written, written about the Holy Spirit and about him effectuating our freedom in Christ. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus. From the law of sin and death. There is therefore no condemnation. There is therefore no fear of the wrath of God. There is therefore no possibility of us ever being separated from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because all who are in Christ, a term that Paul will use over 100 times in his letters, are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. What that means is that when we were born again, when we came to Christ, when we committed our lives to Him, 
When we got saved, we received the identifying mark of ownership, the guarantee of our inheritance, the helper that Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit. And he, according to Jesus, is with us forever. Romans chapter 8, the end of this chapter, verse 38, listen to what Paul writes. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. At the very core of his being, Paul is absolutely convinced that nothing will separate him or any other believer now or ever from the infinite love of God. That we who follow Christ, that we who are in Christ are secure, secure in Christ. And I've got to think that to a first century Christian living in exceedingly dark and uncertain times, these had to have been profoundly comforting and encouraging words. But Paul wasn't writing for their benefit alone. He was writing for our benefit as well. And as good as it is to know for certain that we are secure in Christ, it's equally encouraging to know that God's grace that his grace continues to extend through and by the Holy Spirit. In Luke's gospel, Jesus said this, Luke chapter 11, verse 13. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So here's a question. Here's, here's a question, something to think about. In the midst of our present day struggles, of which we have many, do we ever stop to consider the many blessings we who are in Christ have and have right now? You see, in Christ we have a new identity. In Christ, we have a new master. In Christ, we have a new inheritance. And in Christ, we have a new destiny. In addition, the Holy Spirit sent by God the Father and sent by God the Son resides in all who are in Christ. He empowers us to live the life expected of us. I mean, sometimes it seems that we just get lost in the battle and we lose a bit of perspective. And with that in mind, I want to do something entirely different this morning. I want to spend our time, I want to encourage you during that time. I want to remind you of what you have right now because of what Christ has done. And through this important exercise, my hope is that much like the disciples who on the road to Emmaus, who unknowingly walked with the risen Christ, whose hearts burned within them as he spoke to them, as he opened the scriptures to them, our hearts would burn within us as well. That this morning our confidence will build, our courage would grow, our resolve would deepen, where our spirits are ignited with a new passion for the gospel. So sit back, set your minds on the things of the spirit, direct your full and undivided attention to what the scriptures say about those who about 
those who are in Christ and be encouraged, remembering that every single promise finds their yes and amen in Christ. So in Christ, you are redeemed. You are set free. You are bought with a price. Romans chapter 3, verse 21, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified or declared righteous by God by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. In Christ, you are redeemed. You are set free. You are bought with a price. In Christ, you are alive to God. Romans 6, 1, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. In Christ, you are a possessor of eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. In Christ... We are free from the law of sin. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. In Christ, we are members of one spiritual body. Romans 12, 4. For as in one body, we have many members. And the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body, one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. In Christ, we are fellow workers in God's kingdom. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my sake, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. In Christ, we are sanctified. We are set apart as holy. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified or set apart in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together, together with all those who in every place Call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. In Christ, we are recipients of God's grace. I give thanks to my God always for you. Why? Because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. That in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge. In Christ, we've been given the boldness to speak the truth. But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, like so many, peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. In Christ, we are new creatures. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. 
The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. In Christ, we are free, free. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. In Christ, you are justified, declared righteous. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but God, Christ excuse me, who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In Christ we are sons and daughters of God. For in Christ Jesus you all, you all are sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In Christ we are one with another. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. In Christ we are recipients of every spiritual blessing in heaven. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. In Christ we are seated in the heavenlies. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ we were created for good works. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. For what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk, walk, do life in them. In Christ, we are brought near to God. But now, Paul writes, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. In Christ, we are fellow heirs with the Jews and the promise of a Savior. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. In Christ, we are forgiven by God. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. In Christ, we are encouraged. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, Count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours, 
which is yours in Christ Jesus. In Christ we are at peace. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In Christ we are provided for. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. In Christ, we anticipate the resurrection of our bodies. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. In Christ, we are overseen by the providence of God. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In Christ we are alive. Paul, a, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life, the eternal life that is in Christ Jesus. John writes, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these, these signs are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, believing in him, you may have life, eternal life in his name. In Christ we are saved. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ with eternal glory. To be in Christ is to belong to Christ. To be in Christ is to be saved by Christ. To be in Christ is to walk or do life worthy of Christ. To be in Christ is to be filled to overflowing with the Spirit. Paul writes that God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. In other words, we're never alone. If we're in Christ, we're never alone. God is always with us no matter what we're going through. No matter how dire our circumstance, no matter how glorious or difficult our situation is or might be, he will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. To be in Christ is to make the pursuit of righteousness, godliness, faith, 
love, steadfastness, and gentleness a priority in our lives. To be in Christ is to set our minds. It's to set our minds on the things of the Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8, our text this morning, Paul writes of the great contrast between the saved and the unsaved, the regenerated and the unregenerated, the lost and the found, where a person is either of the mindset of the flesh the realm dominated by human nature, corrupted and controlled by sin, or they're of the mindset of the Spirit, where being in Christ, they joyfully live their lives to please God. Now Paul is clear here, there is no middle ground. There are only two mindsets, and both have their eternal consequences. To set the mind on the spirit or to be in Christ is life and peace. But to set the mind on the flesh, well, it's death. One is receptive to the things of God. The other is hostile towards God. One seeks to fulfill God's perfect law. The other is unwilling and incapable of submitting to God's law. One is able to please God while the other cannot. One leads to eternity in glory with Christ. The other faces eternity without Christ. This is our reality. This is what faces all of mankind. Salvation by faith in Christ alone or perishing alone without Christ. You see, without Christ, we are destitute. We are empty. We are lost. We are helpless and hopeless to secure our own salvation. In a sense, we are dead people walking where there is no life within us. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. You see, no one will ever approach God on their own merit for all sh fall short of his glory. Which means we all need a savior. We all need someone to do for us what we could not or cannot do for ourselves. That's why Jesus, in his conversation with Nicodemus, that's why he said, listen, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Unless one is born again, unless one is regenerated, unless one is given life by the Spirit, he or she cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he or she cannot enter the kingdom of God. But thanks be to God that in his great love, he sent Jesus, his only son, to reconcile a sinful people to himself. And as we come to him in faith, believing that, yes, he is indeed the Son of God, that we are sinners and that he paid the penalty for our sin, we who were once destitute, lost, and wretched souls, we find life in him. And we're born again. The Spirit of God breathes life into us and empowers us to live the life expected of us. This is the glorious message of the gospel. This is what Paul extended it and expanded his life to preach. The message that Jesus came for a sinful, for a lost, for a wayward, for a destitute people. 
and that in him, in Christ, we receive life. We receive liberation. We receive meaning. We receive peace with God. In addition, the Spirit of God comes to dwell within us, empowering us to live our life worthy of Jesus. But sadly, to live apart from Christ is to perish without Christ. That's the argument that Paul is making here. There are only two roads. One leads to life, the other leads to to death. Both have their eternal consequences. The psalmist writes of this in Psalm 1 verses 1 through 6. These two roads, one leads to life while the other leads to one perishing. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand. They will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Two roads, life or death. I pray that each and every one of us would choose the road of life. Faith in Jesus Christ for the salvation of our souls. That he might forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all our unrighteousness, and bring us close to God. I pray that's your testimony this morning. If it is not, a simple cry for mercy will resolve the problem. Let me pray. So Lord, I do thank you for this morning and this time that we can gather around your word. I pray, Lord, that we would understand as believers the significance of what it is to be in Christ that all these promises that we read find their yes and amen in Jesus. And we're so thankful for that. Lord, for anyone who might be listening right now who does not know you, I pray that by your spirit you would nudge or tug at their heart and they would surrender to you and say, yes, I need Jesus in my life. I too am lost. I too am destitute and wretched. I am void of life and meaning. I pray, Lord, that you would meet that person in a profoundly intimate way. Breathe life into their soul. Satisfy them. Empower them to live the life that you've called them to live. And for all of us, Lord, I pray we would live uh, our lives worthy of you. Continue to transform us, Lord, by your spirit, that we might become more like you, that we might live to honor and glorify our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, blessings on you. Have yourself a great week, and we will see you next week.